I am co-CEO and co-founder of BlockSky. Um, we've been talking about blockchain for five years now in this industry. Um, and we moved from hypothetical planning POCs um, into production this summer. Um, we work with major carriers, major buyers. Um, we're on track to move a billion dollars a year through our system. So um, a little underline that this is a happening now thing. Um, and I'm excited to get into this with uh, Dari Boyan around a plain point that we feel like I think everybody does around offer persistency. Um, <clears throat> so with that, um, I'd like to start with just the problem. So uh, Dari, if you could just cue us up on what's the problem that you guys are trying to solve. Absolutely. Um, so hopefully you can see now the, the diagram on the screen that um, depicts the model we all know is that the traditional distribution model, very familiar to us, very simplified uh, image of it. And um, I want to say that switching to a dynamic model, using the same old orchestration between the fares, the rules, and the availability, is bringing big problems uh, that we're all uh, aware of. And on one side, we have fares. That is a huge database. We have right now over 300 million uh, fares in the, in the ATPCO database. And um, the fares are being updated quite some, once an hour at best. On the other side, we have availability data. And availability data right now plays this dynamic component in this existing model. Um, and uh, this data set is highly fragmented, has multiple uh, uh, layers. Uh, it updates in real time. So there's a big challenge when we have to combine these two data sets. And um, so in, in order to combine them, everyone is, is trying to use different smart caches and, and, and things like that. But the result is a price-driven shopping experience because of that. So we know now that the industry is really aiming to move into a, a attribute-based shopping experience which basically means separating the product that you're selling from the price tag associated with it. I was hitting an extra microphone. Is this, oh, there we go. All right, <laughs> hopefully you guys all heard the intro. intro. Um, my intro, this is real, it's happening. Um, <laughs> we're not in POC land anymore, although you guys are going into POC land, it's super fun. You're gonna love it. Um, okay, so a lot of pain points there. We all live and breathe and cry over that stuff every day. Um, what about NDC? Um, when you, uh, NDC is, is focused on a lot of those issues, so uh, how do you think about that in an NDC context? Uh, it's a great question, Brooke. Um, so NDC certainly has changed drastically the, the distribution landscape, we know that. It also brought uh, a huge technological burden on the airline side. And uh, we know now after, what, a decade that NDC has been uh, with us as a, as a technology that uh, it has issues with scalability. And uh, what airlines end up doing, they, they have to uh, contract different uh, technology providers to build their infrastructure needed to serve all these direct NDC requests that, uh, that they're getting. And that has a high price tag. And it has a high price tag because the, in, the infrastructure you're building for one airline cannot be reused as is for the next airline. So every airline has to pay this full price tag to build their infrastructure. And airlines do that because uh, they want to have the control of the offer creation. They want to have control of how the offer is being distributed. So, so it, it, it all makes sense. But um, now if, if we overlay on, on top of that, the really high look to book ratios, sometimes in the tens of thousands to one, the problem is so much bigger. Um, so the only leverage that airlines have right now to, to control this is um, controlling the uh, volume of requests that they are getting from the channels. And this unfortunately, it's a lose-lose proposition because you leave money on the table, both on the airline side and on the channel side. Um, so I, I, my background prior to BlockSide is from, from TMC, and I don't know if there are any TMC folks in the house, but 
you know, one of, uh, one of the favorite things that we deal with is, I found this price over here, why can't I get it in Concur? And then the other, the other one is, where'd the price go? I thought that I had the price. Um, I, I think, you know, from my analysis, a typical TMC corporate pro program, your hit rate is in the 70s. Um, I see some that are optimized really well that are in the 90s. Um, but could you hit some notes on just offer persistency? Absolutely. So everything you said is, is true. And I, I want to add to that that uh, offer persistence is also extremely important for the feedback loop on the airline side to be able to um, adjust their pricing recipe and pricing strategy. Um, so, and, and then down the line into settlement. We talked earlier, I think Tom and, and Alex talked earlier this morning about all the, the problems with, with the uh, taxes and, and in settlement. So, and I know that probably you're very familiar with the settlement issues as well from, yeah. from that, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, what, are, what are your thinking thoughts on, on settlement? How are you guys thinking about that in your paper? Uh, so I, I would say maybe to, to sum up, because I know we're, we're talking about a lot of the, the shortcomings of the current model for, uh, for dynamic world. Um, in, in my mind, there's a one big question. Can we somehow separate the control of this secret recipe used for creating the offer from the infrastructure that is necessary to run that recipe? So in other words, can the airlines keep the control of the offer creation and, and you know, that magic sauce of how, <laughs> or magic uh, uh, recipe, uh, and at the same time not have to pay that full price tag for the computational uh, uh, infrastructure needed to, to create the, the offer. And I know it may sound very utopic, what we're saying here, but uh, we believe at ATPICO that it is possible and that it would uh, um, tremendously help both NDC and the dynamic offer creation. Uh, I mean, for me, when I hear these words and when I first really learned about what ATPICO does is that there's necessi it's a necessity to have some opacity in the market. That you can't facilitate this global multi-point of sale market with so many carriers, so many fares, and, and so many shopping requests every second without some opacity. Um, and I, I think the way that you guys are, are thinking about that is, uh, is, is totally fresh. Um, uh, in terms of this idea that um, there's work that an individual carrier is doing or that the industry is doing collectively, uh, it, how, do you, how do you consider that in your paper? Yeah, um, so in the current reality, every airline is trying to build now their own vision of the dynamic pricing and the, the uh, dynamic model. And we believe that without a, a common effort, um, the, the progress is very slow. So I'm wondering what would it take now for the whole industry to really come together and build this next generation um, uh, computational platform, distribution platform, that will eventually, hopefully, act as a force multiplier to all the participants. Um, amen. <laughs> gonna, gonna take a little while, but I'm, I'm rooting for you inside. Um, okay, so let's get into the proposal. Um, what, you know, clear blue sky, uh, what, what, do you, what do you guys see? Um, so, I, so I think you probably see now the, the, new, the new model that we're proposing, a very simplified diagram here. Um, and what we're technically proposing is on the left side of this, of this diagram. Um, basically, our proposal is a new layer that you see there on the left that is a decentralized network based on blockchain technology. And we believe that blockchain as a technology is a key enabler to reach this goal of separating the uh, control of the recipe that is used from the infrastructure necessary to, to run that recipe. Um, so it, technically, we, what we're exploring here is the creation of a completely distributed uh, computational platform we call it ATP right now the uh, next generation distribution network. And this network um, could become, hopefully, the dynamic layer necessary on top of the existing model. 
And this dynamic layer will augment the existing distribution model, hopefully without uh, disturbing the existing systems and the existing infrastructure out there. Um, so my next cue here is to hit three key points about blockchain. I'm gonna go a little off script. So Susan, sorry. Um, so I think we've all been hearing about, reading about blockchain for years, um, everything from Bitcoin, it comes up on conferences. I think the themes that I'm hearing here um, and you know how I explain this to my friends and family members is that there are certain activities that are not in themselves economically productive. Um, there's this velocity of money argument that originally people bartered, then they had a medium of exchange with gold, then Romans invented fiat currency, then you have private issue currency and IOUs, credit cards, ACH, SWIFT, et cetera. You know, if Delta had to start bartering with carrots tomorrow, their, their sales would go off a cliff. So the idea is that every time you sort of speed up the velocity of money, that you unlock productivity, that there are human actions maintaining ledgers, maintaining architectures individually as airlines that are not economically productive and that moving past them, we all get to do better, more productive things. I think broadly speaking, this is what I'm hearing when you're talking about, you know, um, a network. It's a, it's a problem that I think about a lot, obviously. Um, so uh, to, you know, just bring it back here, the key themes are, what are the actions that are not economically productive that can be done by a network or just hardware or code? Um, and I mean, for us, there's just as a, as a business, you know, we use SaaS companies all over because we don't need to do those things. Like I don't need to schedule meetings. Clockwise can schedule them. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a similar theme here. Um, and I think that's what you're talking about when you're saying, you know, what is the network doing versus what are the individual actors? Um, so those are, that's my three hits. Maybe it was four or five. Um, but uh, Daria, thank no. you. Um, I want to uh, transition now to um, Boyan, um, and uh, you know, if you could just pick up there and, and share your thoughts. Yeah, just as Daria said, I want to emphasize that it's a net new layer. It's not going to disturb what the industry has already built, and we have a lot. And so it will rather uh, augment current distribution models. And I see this model, this new layer, uh, initially implemented by early adopters uh, and industry innovators. And as it then, as it proves its capability to bring our industry to new era of uh, dynamic offers and uh, personalized retailing, more and more industry players will join. And at some point it will become de facto the integration layer of the distribution workflow. And the current model will refocus on uh, what Tom mentioned earlier, on the, on the attributes. And the result is uh, shifting to this um, attribute-based shopping. I'm gonna venture, uh, can everybody hear in the back? Um, you're gonna hate me now, but you'll love me later. I'm gonna ask you to speak up for the next one. <laughs> okay. We can get a drink and work it out. Um, okay, uh, keyword there, network. Um, uh, how, how are you thinking about network? Yeah, in its essence, a blockchain is a um, distributed state machine which guarantees the data uh, consistency and validity for all participants. And <coughs> but we want to go further. We want to use this network, uh, the nodes of the network for computation of the data we are distributing across it. And <coughs> in the traditional model, in our current state, uh, it's already a very complex web of hubs and participants playing different roles in different, for different cases. 
uh, well, um, uh, the difference in, in the blockchain is that connections are peer-to-peer, -peer, which shortens the distance between uh, participants, uh, in this case, between airlines and um, channels, which translates to faster communications, lower network traffic, more accurate computations, because we envision instead uh, transferring some queries between airlines and uh, channels, airlines to be able to distribute their secret recipe. So channels will be able to, uh, to call their local node which is much faster, and return to the airlines only uh, feedback loop. And because it's more like a round table where all the participants are equal, so they can exchange data much quickly. So it's not only that the channels are getting faster and more accurate data, but also the airlines are receiving real-time feedback. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of retell that in my world because um, I, I I followed you. I think probably 30 people or 17 people followed you, and that's the paper. That is the paper, everybody. So read the paper. Um, I think of this as a single version of the truth problem, and in the TMC context, uh, there is the agency mid office. There's the agency back office. There's whatever the credit card company thinks was sold, there's whatever IATA has, and whatever ARC has, or whatever the traveler has in their confirmation email, uh, there's whatever's in the expense system. All of these things are different, and we all sort of run around and go like, ah, you know, I'm sorry your expense report wasn't filed on time. I'm sorry that the global reporting program is only 87% accurate on a global level after we wrote everything up from various GDSs. Um, we kind of live in my world with that problem. It's just de facto, we just soldier on. Um, if you try to address that problem, which we do, um, you find out that it becomes a hardware and software question. Um, you start asking yourselves questions like Boyan is vocalizing here. So um, read the paper um, and get into the hardware because it is about the machines, where they do in the computing and how do they talk to each other. Um, but in this world, where's pricing happening? Yeah. And I'll refer again to, to the current world, where we uh, shopping is already a very complex process. It's not possible to, um, to provide all possible solutions because there are many billions and constantly changing. That's why it's delivered in form of ingredients. And some of those ingredients have a uh, price tag. So the pricing is inevitably going through this, reassembling these ingredients to, to have the, prime, the final price, which is um, requiring a lot of computation. But what we uh, propose is to the pricing to have it separate much more powerful rule system which will be able to handle all um, many more input parameters. And it will be also distributed, which means the pricing will happen on the nodes. Uh, the channels will not need to ask airline for each uh, pricing, but they will be able to calculate it locally, which fixes one of the biggest problems of look-to-book ratio. It can go up to million to one without changing the picture. Um, okay, there's a lot to digest here, but I think we've got a, a helpful slide that's gonna queue up some of the key takeaways here. Um, uh, or maybe not, we've got a QR code. Okay, <laughs> um, Susan, this is your queue. Three beats, we'll, we're moving on. Um, Okay, so um, let's talk about um, uh, 
let's talk about um, blockchain just in general and, and specifically the uh, decentralization. Um, why is that? Why is that so critical to your solution here? Why well, it's so critical? Because uh, in the existing world, there are trusted entities like AT people who play a role of a hubs well, and middlemen. But in, um, in the blockchain world, there is no middleman. There is cons consensus algorithm. So these trust, trusted entities uh, will play a different role. Instead of uh, controlling data and distributing data, they will, um, they will govern the network and facilitate the, the infrastructure. And uh, decentralization is very important because it, I've already mentioned about the computation. It's not happening in one place. It's, it's distributed in a very fair way, which means the channels who, who want to consume more offers will just need to uh, provision more hardware to do it on their side. And which will, um, which will become a decentralized computational platform. And security, which is very important when you have all competitors in a single network. With, uh, in, in the current world, we have uh, data control structures on different levels, which puts a lot of burden on, on the distribution and on the computation side. While in, in, uh, in a blockchain network, the security is embedded into the fabric of the software, into the infrastructure. So it simplifies a lot of, of the problem. And so these are these are big ideas. Uh, again, they're they're ones close to my heart, and hopefully close to some people's hearts out here, or or will be soon. Um, one of the things that I love about the airline industry is that airlines compete so fiercely with each other and then also cooperate, um, whether it's through protection agreements, uh, regulatory issues going to the Hill, um, or cooperating through ATPCO, IATA, ARC, uh, UATP, CETA, et cetera. Um, and of all of the cooperators, um, I think you guys, you guys sit in a very interesting space because it's pricing, it's this balance between opacity and uh, transparency. But as we look out as an industry, you know, every day an airline has to feed people, keep them safe, uh, clean the seats, be a marketing and lifestyle brand, operate lounges. Uh, you know, an airline is actually a roll up of 36 different, extremely complicated businesses. Um, and in that context, I think it's, it's super challenging to innovate. Do you build a new lounge? Do you have new routes? Do you get rid of your aircraft? Um, and I, you know, the airlines that we work closely with, um, I see them struggle to and succeed and win at innovating every day. And I root them on and I'm very passionate about it. Um, but in terms of ATP Co and how you guys think about innovation and you're planting something very future forward here with this problem uh, or this solution, but when you think about the, this problem, are there other approaches um, that you guys are also thinking about? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, I can be honest that even inside ATP, we're debating the blockchain <laughs> as, a, as a solution. Um, and I think Tom mentioned in the, in the opening here that we do have um, a uh, dynamic offer design team. And this design team is exploring multiple ways to, to help uh, us transition into the, the dynamic uh, world. And we know that it's going to be a gradual transition. That's without, without doubt. It's not going to be overnight. It's going to be a gradual process. So from that perspective, the way I like to look at it is that in order to, to be bold and make this transition, first we need to look at our toes, right? We need to see, okay, what is the next step? 
And that next step is something that ATPCO is already working on, which is the um, uh, adapting our standards, expanding our standards, making sure that we are covering for all these new scenarios that the new world is bringing in, right? So that's our toes. Then we need to look further a little bit out and say, okay, what is the next milestone? Where, where are we headed here? And this is where the key industry partners together with, with ATPCO, uh, under actually the umbrella of the IATA think tank, uh, has explored a uh, um, caching solution. I think there's a code name Project Robot and then Project Robot 2, the next incarnation of it. Some, some of you may be familiar with it. Um, and this project is um, exploring the creation of smart caches that then can be improved over time uh, through machine learning. And that really solves a, a, a bunch of problems that, that we're having. But again, it's not a full solution. It, it takes us to the next level. So here, what we're exploring is more of like, if we look at the horizon, if we look at the North Star, where can we head? Where could we dream to head? How this might look like when we are fully scaled, when we're really having personalized offers. And that is where I think we're trying to, uh, to be bold and to challenge the industry to think about technologies like blockchain that can bring us into that, uh, into that future. Um, I love it. Um, where do we go to learn more? Uh, well, like we said in the beginning, we have a, a white paper. Boyan here is the, the author and the mastermind of that white paper that uh, should come out uh, hopefully in the next month or so. Uh, you can use this uh, QR code that you see up on the, on the screen uh, and leave your information. If you leave your email, you'll get notified when we publish the, the white paper so you can actually dive deeper and, and get some of these details we're talking about. Uh, second, if you are not uh, part of the dynamic offer design team, it is an open forum. Anyone can join. Please approach us and make sure that you're coming to the table. That's how you can make an, uh, an impact for sure, right? Um, and third, I would say just approach us. We're around here. Any of us, we, we love all three of us are passionate about blockchain and this technology. If you're interested, just approach us and let's have a conversation. Um, last line here on the notes is Brooke closing out the session, so I'm going to close it out. Um, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. And I, I would just say to the audience that um, coming from the agency side and the large corporate buyer side, we are seeing large corporate buyers change the way they buy travel. It, we're coming out of a period where the travel manager went to GBTA and signed some contracts and everything came back. Now we're seeing procurement, treasury, finance, CFOs start asking, this is a huge t and &E line item. What's going on? Uh, how is this happening? What's the story here? Um, what are our traveler frustrations? Um, so we're seeing a, a bunch of large buyers take on sort of generational questions here. Um, I think we're all thinking about generational questions, but I think planting a flag in North Star is, is entirely appropriate. Um, you know, you've got to have smart caching and things that come probably faster. Um, but there does need to be a direction. And I'll say from the corporate buyer side and the TMC side, we're really feeling that and always happy to Worth Carriers and ATPCO who um, have similar lines of sight. So thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you.